energy development is a key aspect in, in economic development. And this is demonstrated by, in Egypt, with the completion of the High Aswan Dam in 1965, um, that produced, doubled overnight with the flipping of a switch the electricity available to Egypt. As a result of that, a number of, of industries grew and Egypt has become a middle industrialized country with lots of in industry and still importantly, a lot of agriculture and some agro-based industries. So the, the, the Nile and the High Aswan Dam has been a really important asset to Egypt because of the water for irrigation and also the water for, for energy and, and electricity through hydropower. In, when the High Aswan Dam was built, Sudan and Egypt um, came up with a treaty, the 1959 treaty, which allocated all of the Nile water between Egypt and Sudan. And the rest of the, the Nile basins, the riparians, were not part of that treaty. And importantly, Ethiopia, which provides 75% of the water that arrives at Aswan, they were not party to that treaty. So the UN policy on transboundary waters have two key principles, um, shared water and no downstream harm. Well, this makes it very difficult because Ethiopia now would like to develop their hydropower resources on the Blue Nile, but this has the potential of, of harming um, Egypt because it might be reduced flows at Aswan. So there's been a number of studies of that, um, and it looks like that even though it would just be hydropower up at the highest, at the, what's called the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, um, there will be impacts on Egypt in terms of the, the volume of water entering Egypt and then the level of the highest one dam, which will have impacts. So in terms of water, there's no win-win solution um, on, on the Nile. There'll be a winner and a loser. However, there's an expression that the Nile Basin Initiative, which is started over 10 years ago to bring the Nile countries together, was shared benefits, not shared water. But those shared benefits are economic benefits. So there's been a over, over emphasis on biophysical impacts and biophysical benefits, hydropower units of gigawatt hours or irrigation area irrigated, in, in the work and study by the World Bank and others on the Nile, but there's been a lack of work on um, the economics. So what we're doing together with MIT and wider and um, uh, uh, Sherman Robinson at, at IFPRI is joining us, um, is to look at economy-wide models of Egypt, Sudan, Ethiopia, and South Sudan to try to understand the value of water to their economies. And in, in our first phase is to just get that and let people understand that there might be a quite different um, elasticity of GDP growth to water in the different countries so that people can understand that maybe we can start sharing other things like Ethiopia selling energy to Egypt at a reduced rate um, to drop because they need energy. Um, that'll bring income to help drive development in Ethiopia. Sudan in the middle that wants to grow, the dam will help them with flood control. So we're trying to look at it from an economic perspective. So the tools we developed under the development under climate change, the sacred program, we are going to apply to the individual countries of, of the, the Nile, Eastern Nile. Um, so they, decision makers and policy makers, will understand just how important water is because all people in Ministry of Water and water engineers like myself think it's the most important resource. But actually, it may not be as important as they think. And then this will be the basis for, for dialogue on sharing of resources and regional cooperation uh, at a trade level and an economic level, rather than focusing on the water where there is going to be winners and losers. I think we can all be winners if we look at the economic side of that. Mm -hmm.